Today I'm visiting the True Blood series in order to talk about the Vampire Authority, the weirdly religious vampire council who oversaw the running of the vampire community. This council was the ultimate authority over all vampires across the globe, overseeing matters of both religious and political issues in relation to the vampire population. They also had their own inside law enforcement and also a governing system in many countries of which the authority was established in. Certain areas would then be overseen by vampires of different ranks who would then report to the authority when required to do so. I'll get into those details shortly. It was worshipped by many and feared by even more. So what's the Vampire Authority really all about? Why was it created and how did it achieve such a level of political and religious power? Let's take a look. The Authority was originally created to protect the blood of Lilith, the original vampire. You probably already know what Lilith looks like but if you don't, she's that girl who walks around naked while drenched in blood. Pretty weird but that's true blood. Lilith was estimated to be over 8,000 years old and created by God himself, allegedly in his own image, a vampire. So the Vampire Bible says that after she met the sun, her progeny collected her remains the following night. Later transferred to a flask containing only her blood, the authority was said to have guarded it ever since. It is from this lineage and the blood of Lilith that the authority derives its power and religious stature. They all gather round and ceremoniously take a drop of her blood and are all like, ah Lilith is in me, when in reality it's warping their minds even further under Lilith's ghostly manipulation. The authority itself was said to be thousands of years old. The halls of its latest sanctum were supposed to date back to the Byzantine era. I have no idea what that is, so I googled it, and it's between 330 and 1453 AD. However, Eric Northman spoke of the authority's existence of being only 500 years old as a commonly known fact, casting doubt on the credibility of the organization's claims. It could be a case of fabricating the date of establishment in order to make everything they represent seem more prestigious. The authority was led by the guardian of the blood, Roman Zamoage, for over 400 years, working in secret to acquire absolute power over the vampire population. Roman was that vampire that you just have no idea how muscly he is until he actually takes his shirt off. Using state-of-the-art technology and a secret police composed of mercenaries and assassins, both human and vampire, the authority controls every aspect of institutionalized vampire society, from the monarchs to the agenda of the American Vampire League, by setting law, administering punishment and settling disputes. It was literally a government within a government, a world within a world. The council was absolute power. The find the authority was considered treason to the vampire culture and community, even blasphemy as you are denying Lilith. The council sanctions vampire monarchs to rule over large areas, assumedly state by state. They really do hold monarch titles and are considered the highest point of authority before the magister and the council respectively. The council will also forcibly remove by way of the true death, any king or queen who loses its favour or appears weak. Some degree of the authority's oversight of the monarchs was exercised by the magister, the highest adjudicating official in the new world. The magister was sworn to serve the authority and instilled fear in many, if not all of those he came across, even if they did nothing wrong. It was actually the magister who forced Bill Compton to turn Jessica into a vampire as compensation for killing Longshadow. So let's take a look at how the Authority Council is created and what it consists of. There's the Chief of State and the Guardian, who was assisted and advised by six Chancellors. It appears as though each Chancellor was assigned to oversee a specific continent, but definitely looks like the Chancellors shared their duties when necessary and most seem to have good relationships with each other. As I mentioned earlier, there's one guardian who was in charge of leading the council and also the protection of Lilith's blood. The best known guardian is Roman Zamoage as I mentioned. Roman was supported by his six chancellors who were as follows. Nan Flanagan who was the spokesperson for the American Vampire League. She was basically the face of the organization 
with numerous appearances on TV, with her numerous efforts on promoting the benefits of mainstreaming. She was killed by Bill when she tried to recruit him and Eric to her rival organization. Alexander Drew, the angelic looking almost 100 year old vampire, turned when he was just 9 years old. Not much is known about this means of transition, but it's interesting to see such a young, human-bodied vampire being allowed to exist as so many vampire franchises forbid it. Not only that, but to see what I'd call an immortal child actually sit as Chancellor just shows the differences between franchises and why they're so appealable. Alexander was executed right before the entire council by Roman for his sympathy with the Sanguinista rule. Our next council member is Kibwe Akinjide, and he was an ancient African vampire who sat on the council and also led the authorities' strike force. Kibwe appeared as if he cared about peace and rehabilitation, but in truth, he cared very little for human life in general. He gladly converted to the new Sanguinista direction, and this faith in Lilith grew even deeper. He was killed by Bill Compton after the latter viewed him as competition for Lilith's blood. Our next council member was Dieter Brown. The Prussian-born vampire was a calmly spoken and rather collected individual. Don't let that demeanor fool you, however, as Dieter loved torturing prisoners in every way imaginable, like injecting liquid silver into their vampire veins. He was beheaded by Russell Edgington for refusing to drink Lilith's blood. Then we have Nora Gainsborough. One of my favorite vampires, I might add, is the next member of the Authority Council. She devoutly supported the teachings of Lilith and was originally in support of the Sanguisa movement. She was Eric Northman's vampiric sister as she was the second of Godric's two progenies alongside Eric himself. Sadly for Nora, she met her end when she was infected with the Hepatitis V strain. Our next council member is Salone Agrip. She is one of the world's oldest and strongest vampires in existence, with Russell being the only known vampire that's older than Salome. She manipulated certain situations to gain power, despite her own strength and seeing humans as nothing more than substance. After conspiring to install Russell as the new guardian, she soon realizes the mistake she has made, living in fear of her decision. Salome's desire to be Lilith's chosen one was so overwhelming that she was tricked into drinking silver-laced vampire blood by Bill Compton. Before staking her, Bill taunts her lack of composure to not recognize the foul smell that Silver has on a vampire's senses, especially one as old and experienced as Salome. Accepting her faith, she's then staked by Bill. The last original council member was Rosalind Harris, a vampire who really irritated me and I mean it in a good way as it conveys how good of an actor she is and how well she's played by Carolyn Hennessy. Rosalind's opinions and views don't really seem to matter when it begins to affect her own self-preservation. She enjoys asserting power over people like when she showed up in Fantasia and took Pam. She was quick to change her views to that of the Sanguinista movement when Russell took over from Roman despite stressing how mainstreaming cannot be allowed to fail when judging Bill and Eric. She met her demise when Sam Merlo flew inside her as a fly before shape-shifting back into his human form. Nothing is known about how Guardians or Chancellors were selected, though Chancellor Agrippa mentions that she sponsored Nora's appointment, suggesting that incoming Chancellors required a recommendation of a sitting one in order to be considered. Due to the Authority's secret nature, not much was known about its official policies. Mainstreaming was the focal point of the body's agenda from as far back as the 20th century. It was conceived by the Authority under the leadership of the late Roman Samoage. The idea of mainstreaming was also part of an agreement between the Authority and the United States government in order to create a world of acceptance. At the height of the Authority's support for mainstreaming, feeding in public was punishable by the true death due to the uncomfortable nature it provided to onlookers as well as instilling fear in humans. This didn't really stop many vampires from doing it, with even several council members feigning support of mainstreaming but at least continuing to feed and kill in private. Following the coups which culminated in the true deaths of the Guardian Roman and Chancellor Bronn, Sanguinitism was supported by the authority for a time. As I explained when speaking about the original council members, all of the Chancellors have now either met the true death 
as have many of the authority's employees and guards, in addition to some of them just resigning from their posts. Although it can't be confirmed, but it's likely that after the death of General Kavanaugh of the US military, the US government intervened on some part, removed all traces of the authority base after it was destroyed. From a personal standpoint, I love that the vampires became powerful enough to create their own government and economy within the world they lived in. I love how it tied into religion and how they had their own police force who upheld the vampire law. It's just brilliant writing if you ask me. It's really, really fresh. And with that being said, everyone, that is today's video on the Vampire Authority from True Blood.